we would like people to know that Equine Guelph is the place to come if they need horse information. And that is information that's going to support horse well-being and welfare. And we are sort of the, the triage, if you will, where they come to us and we can help them find where else they need to go. Prior to the launch of the website, uh, we had a newsletter uh, twice a year. So really nothing too interesting, but uh, it was as much as the resources could handle at that point in time and small staff. And so now as we've grown, we've been able to increase it to the website, the newsletter, the e-news, and then a variety of seminars. We've increased the interactivity. So we started out very passive with just a newsletter twice a year and uh, a website which really didn't have a lot of information on it other than who we were and what we did. And we have really increased that now to have a lot more information for the horse owner on a variety of topics. Uh, we've included the interviews and the videos and uh, again trying to engage them into coming into the website and staying in the website by looking at the different places that they can uh, investigate on the site. It came from an educator's perspective as well as public relations because I want them to engage in the material and so the more choices they have there, the more interactivity they have there, I feel that it's going to give a lot more information to them. They'll take that away from the website because they've actively chosen to go look at the different parts. With, with the new generation and with the changes in our society, and also from my background as an educator, I know that a visual uh, approach has a lot more impact than just the written word. So we're trying to get people to see things, hear things, read things, and at some point we may even get them talking about it with blogs and, and interactive forums. The more interactive you can be, the better impact you're going to have on your audience, and that's why we've gone that way. We do have restrictions though because a lot of our people are rural based and we don't have high speed. So we very much have to be careful on what we do online. Uh, we can't have streaming videos uh, without it being a problem for somebody out on a country phone line. So we're very cognizant of that fact and that's one of the reasons why we try and blend the, the approach. So some videos, some text, uh, some printed materials so that people can still access our message but in a variety of different ways. We're actually looking at changing that to a two-way system down the road. Now that we've got a lot more interactivity in it, we'd like to get surveys put up on that so that we can get more interactivity from the industry. Uh, we have just launched a, an economic impact survey, so that's sort of our first foray into that two-way street, if you will. And uh, it's a bit early to see how successful that is, but I think it will be. We've had a lot of interest in that. And we're also looking to get more feedback from the industry on other areas that they want to see information, other tools that they would like for the industry. And so that's just an area we're getting into now. We have online education program for adults. We have workshops. We also think it's very important that the results of research uh, get known to the industry. Um, the researchers at the University of Guelph do a range of equine research studies that of course get published in the scientific journals, but we really think it's important that um, the technology transfer continues to those who funded the research in a way that's usable for them. So if the, the results of research, what impact does it have for those that are directly taking care of the horses? And we use our communication efforts to make sure that this, the end results get transferred to the end users. With the equine industry, because there's so many different associations and disciplines, what has a, a strong impact for one audience may not be of a great importance to another audience. So it's really important to decide the information that you want to get out, where to, to create a targeted group of where you want to send it to. Um, you don't want to waste a lot of editors' times by, time by sending out a news release that really isn't of importance to their audience. Uh, so it, it really is of um, importance to create targeted lists so you know if you, um, for example, with the equine industry, we have both racing and non-racing sectors. We have both standard bred and thoroughbred racing. Um, if there's something that you know isn't really of importance to, say, the standard bred racing industry, but it is importance to, say, the um, non-racing industry, it's really important to target your releases so that they're reaching the, the people that you know that it's going to be important to.
the different types of media work in different ways. Uh, for example, with newspapers, they, they're on very tight deadlines. So if we get a call from a local newspaper with a reporter that wants to do a story, we know that you have to respond to them immediately. With some of the magazines, because they have longer deadlines, they have a little bit more time to work with. Um, so it's not that you don't respond to them, but you know that you have a little bit of a longer time in order to find the photos that they're interested in and lining up um, you know, the right person to interview. But with, uh, especially with local newspapers, um, or with radio or TV, you know that you don't, you can't um, waste a lot of time. It's a great opportunity if they're contacting you, so you have to make sure that you respond, you know, as quickly as possible and being as accommodating as possible. The way to get news in the news, um, making making sure that you know who to contact. Uh, if there's an event that you can talk to the person in person rather than by email or by phone, just staying in contact with your key people that you know will listen to you and will consider uh, publishing your information. If somebody has met you in person and has talked to you on the phone in different capacities, they're going to be more likely to read what you send to them and they'll actually they'll consider it uh, rather than a cold call or um, a mass email list where they don't really know who the email is coming from. So I think just uh, contact, person to person contact is important. we do pitch ideas to the general media. Um, uh, sometimes media will contact us, um, for example, if there's an event coming up that involves horses, they might, at the University of Guelph, because we have such a large emphasis on horses, they might just want to know what is uh, new and upcoming. Um, so there's definitely, the, the general media might not have something specific in mind, so we can steer them in a direction that we want to promote. For example, uh, sorry, an example of, of steering um, your story the way that you would like it to go to, uh, every year there's a large show called the, uh, the Royal Winter Fair in Toronto. Uh, that's every November. Um, we've had last November, we had some media contact us that know that we're going to be going down with some horse exhibits. Um, last year and this year, our big emphasis is on safety on the farm. So children's safety, um, not just with horses, but with farms in general. So that was a great opportunity to steer them towards this concept of being safe on the farm. Um, and we were able to um, make sure that that was the emphasis in terms of both the stories and also the photos that were taken. So it, it, they were looking for um, horses in general, horses going, uh, horse exhibit going to a large agricultural fair. And we were able to steer it towards what our focus was in terms of that program, programming for that year.